It was King Sri Vikramaraja Singha who converted the stretch of paddy field known as Thigolwella into a beautiful lake. Earlier, it was called the Milky Sea. The small island in the middle of the lake was called the Kundasale. This was also a place of rest for the king. The queen's bath, Ulpange, was a two-storied building. It had large ventilator windows. In the center, it is said, there was a pond or well fed with water from the lake. The Temple of the Tooth, where a tooth relic of the Buddha is enshrined. The Temple of the Tooth is one of the most sanctified and venerated places in the island. The tooth relic, which was brought to the island in the 4th century AD, was venerated by a long line of kings and became the supreme symbol of sovereignty, the custodianship of which conferred a right to rule the country. It is still housed in the Temple of the Tooth in Kandy, the last center of government of the Sinhalese kings. The first temple of the tooth in the Kanda Udarata kingdom was built by King Vimala Dharmasurya I, who was king during the years 1592 to 1603. The two-storied building around it was built by King Narendra Singha. The Hevisi Mandapaya, or the drumming hall, with its stone pillars embellished with carvings, is the lower story of the two-storied building built by King Narendra Singha, enclosing the Temple of the Tooth. The lower story of the Temple of the Tooth, which is known as the Pahata Malaya, is used as an image room. It abounds in paintings and carvings, typical of the Candian period. In the inner chamber of the Temple of the Tooth is the enshrined tooth relic of the Buddha, which has been there for many centuries. Even today, the most colorful and resplendent festival of the island is the traditional festival of the tooth relic, celebrating the season of Asala, July-August. There is evidence to show that the Festival of the Tooth was celebrated in the Anuradhapura Kingdom too. The tooth relic which was brought to Sri Lanka during the reign of King Kitsiri Mevan in the 4th century AD, it is said, was carried in procession from the Royal Temple of the Tooth to the Abhagiri Monastery. This practice was continued till the 6th century AD. The Chinese traveler monk, Fa Hien, has left records of the festival of the tooth relic he had witnessed. He mentions that the king, with the participation of the people, celebrated the festival in a grand manner. In later years, there were records to show 
that the festival was held during the Polon Narua period in the reign of King Parakramabahu I. Similarly, during the Dambadeni period, a grand festival had been held in the reign of Pandita Parakramabahu. This festival procession, it is said, King Kirti Sri Rajasinghe added the procession of the tooth relic, and there are records to confirm it. The festival which ceased to be held after the liberation struggle of the Sinhalese people against the British in 1818 was revived by the colonial power after a lapse of 10 years. There is a tunnel way called the Ambarava, which it is said was constructed so that the drumming within the temple could be heard at the Askiria Monastery, which was entrusted with the custodianship of the relic. It is a fact that even today, the sounds of the drums are carried far into the distance through the Ambarava passageway. Through one end of the drumming hall, the Pattiripur, or the octagon, could be entered. It was built by King Sri Vikrama Rajasinghe and is said to be the creation of the master builder Devendra. From the Pattiripur, a clear view of the city and its environs can be seen. The Pattiripur was used by the king to address the people and perhaps as a resting place too. Eighteen fifteen marked the tragic end of the Sinhalese royal dynasty. By 1815, the British, who had established their rule over the maritime provinces, which the Dutch held in gross violation of the treaty with the Sinhalese king, through intrigue, deception, and with the connivance of an influential section of the treacherous Candian aristocracy, took over the administration of the Candian kingdom. The king, betrayed by his ministers, was finally captured by the British, thus ending Sinhalese sovereignty, which for two millennia or more could not be overthrown by any imperial power, Eastern or Western. <laughs> 